Good evening, you're watching News Mongolian Be World. I'm your host, Andr Ramatar. In four top stories, school psychologists are trained for the new school year. Survey shows that 7 billion US dollars could be lost annually due to the traffic congestion. Mongolian national team won two medals at the World Youth Wrestling Championships. And for the news, stay tuned. The Ministry of Health reported that 1,566 new COVID-19 cases were confirmed on Monday and four more people have died. As of today, 1,566 new cases were confirmed from among the people who took COVID-19 tests nationwide. 1,674 patients recovered within the past 24 hours. Sadly, four more people died due to COVID-19 complications. All new cases are of domestic transmission. 342 were confirmed in Ulaanbaatar and the remaining 1,224 in the provinces. 10,928 COVID-19 patients are being treated at hospitals. Additionally, 10,000-11,000 patients are being treated at home. Among the 10,928 COVID-19 patients being treated at hospitals, 6,303 are showing mild symptoms of illness and 185 are in critical condition. Currently in Mongolia, 2,227,434 people have received the first COVID-19 vaccine dose and 2,055,268 people have received a second dose of a vaccine. The Ministry of Education has trained school psychologists for the new school year. They will be on school campuses to help students readjust to life after that long time away from classrooms. School children in Mongolia have stayed at home for televised and online lessons for a year and a half. A recent survey indicated that more than half of students have fallen behind in learning. Also, lockdown hurt children's language and social skills. A total of 72 psychologists have been trained to work in schools. They will provide counseling to public school students in the capital city and provinces. The number of graduates in psychology is actually high. I believe that if the government puts psychologists in position in all sectors, the mental health of the general public will improve in 10 or 20 years. The school psychologist training program lasted 45 days. The program was organized by the Academy of Management. The work of the new school psychologists will be evaluated throughout the school year. The program is being funded by the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation. The role of a school is not preparing children for exams but to prepare them for life. This means a child's psychology comes first. Of the program participants, 48 will work in the provinces and 24 will work in the capital city. They are becoming the country's first certified school psychologists. There are 670 public schools in Mongolia. The Ministry of Education says it plans to provide all schools with professional school psychologists in the near future. A recent survey suggests that the annual loss caused by the traffic congestion will reach 20 billion MNT or 7 million US dollars. The city mayor is calling for action from all sectors to join forces in reducing traffic congestion. According to the 2019 study, traffic jams have caused losses of about 11.8 trillion Mongolia Turuk to the capital city. The recent survey calculated that the annual loss caused by the traffic jams could reach around 20 trillion in the upcoming years. City Mayor Sumyabatar encourages all sectors to work in unity to solve this pressing issue. The city administration plans to move state organizations to outside of the city in order to reduce urban concentration. The number of vehicles keeps increasing by about 80,000 annually. Our survey shows that currently 78% of the main roads are in constant state of congestion. We will meet with the company owners whose companies are located along the congested roads. We will ask them to move out from the busy zone. This year, the capital city allocated 420 billion Mongolian turuk to manage traffic congestion. Actions include amending urban planning, replace public transport, and improve the entire traffic system. For the renewed traffic regulation rules, the city administration will receive public suggestions. A parliamentary working group recently visited First Central Hospital. After shifting to performance-based budgeting, 
First Central Hospital raised salaries for its doctors and workers by 20%. Based on the quality of service and performance, employee salaries at First Central Hospital were increased in the first half of 2021, which led to a 20% increase of doctors and hospital workers. Additionally, an increase was allocated for overtime and bonuses for medical workers working in the COVID-19 ward. In accordance with an order from the Minister of Health, the hospital has shifted to a semi-independent status and the borders of directors of the hospital has made it possible for the hospital to have its budget increased based on performance results confirmed by the board. These people working in the healthcare sector are under tremendous pressure at work and they deserve to get satisfying pay. Our goal is to increase their salaries and it is even possible to increase their salary by two or more times. However, the amount of the increase depends on the management skills of the administrator selected by the board of directors. The First Central Hospital staff has requested to have some of the costs of service changed and to increase the budget for the treatment of some diseases. Due to the lower budget allocations for some diseases defined in Article 3 of the Health Insurance Law, the hospital has now been facing difficulties in conducting its delivery of services and has requested changes to the article and solutions to other urgent issues at the hospital. Now let's take a look at the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank. Now let's take a look at Mongolia's current affairs. On August 19th, the Speaker of the State Great Horas, Zandan Shatter, got acquainted with the operations of the Mongolian Ball Factory, which is producing soccer balls made from processed yak leader. The factory's manager, Irtan Bayer, received the speaker and introduced the products. Mongolia has been producing soccer balls made of processed yak leader that are environmentally friendly and meet international standards since 2017. The company continues its operations in line with the goals to develop responsible products that have a clear origin. Consumers in the global market have a high interest in environmentally friendly products made from sustainable materials where the origins are clear. Thus, the company aims making Mongolian livestock sourced commodities and products that are highly valued as well as improving their competitiveness on the global market and supporting the supply chain with a traceability system named Responsible Nomads. This system is currently being developed in the framework of the Green Goal Livestock Health Project funded by the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation. The raw materials prepared through the system are being used to produce two types of soccer balls for adults and children introduced the manager. Congratulating the Mongolian ball company, Speaker Zandan Shatter highlighted the importance of this industry in creating more job opportunities as well as increasing herders' income. The government of Mongolia and the U.S. government's Millennium Challenge Corporation broke ground on August 20 on a 93 million U.S. dollars advanced water purification plant in Mongolia's capital city, Ulaanbaatar. The president of Mongolia, Huritsu Okhna, invited the U.S. ambassador to Mongolia, Michael Klecheski. Millennium Challenge Corporation's deputy resident country director, Eric Gutschow, and members of the Millennium Challenge account Mongolia to celebrate the start of the first major infrastructure project in a 350 million U.S. dollars Mongolia Water Compact. The new state-of-the-art AWPP will supply up to 50 million cubic meters of water annually, boosting the bulk water supply production capacity in Ulaanbaatar by around 65% over its lifetime. The AWPP is a part of 
phased five-year initiative that will ultimately increase Ulaanbaatar's water supply production capacity by 80 percent. Along with the AWPP, MCA Mongolia will also construct new groundwater wells downstream from Ulaanbaatar, construct a new wastewater recycling plant and pipelines to provide high-quality treated water for industrial use, as well as increase the country's institutional capacity and the long-term sustainability of Ulaanbaatar's water supply through reforms and technical assistance. The 2021 World Youth Wrestling Championships took place in Ufa, Russia. The Mongolian team finished the competition with one silver and one bronze medal. In total, Asian Games silver and bronze medalist won a silver medal in the women's 50 kg weight category. In the quarterfinals, she defeated Natalia Woltsak of Poland, a double bronze medalist at the European Junior Championships, and in the semi finals, she defeated Zehra Demir Khan of Turkey, a bronze medalist of the European Junior Championships 9 4. In the finals, she lost to the Buenos Aires 2018 Youth Olympics champion Emily King Shilson of the United States by a score of 0 10. Mukir, the bronze medalist of the 2019 Junior World World Cup also won a bronze medal at the Youth World Cup. She lost to Kyrgyzstan's Kalmira Bilimbek 4-6 in the quarterfinals of the 55kg weight category. Her opponent advanced to the finals giving her the chance to compete for the bronze medal. She beat Peyton Shua of the United States 10-0 and Anastasia Yandushkina of Russia to win a bronze medal. Athletes of the Mongolian Paralympic national team are going to compete in the 16th Summer Paralympic Games Tokyo 2020 and have started their training in the Budokan. Muhwat Yadamdorch and Artin Tsitsik will compete in para judo. Tsarambatar Olympic bronze medalists as well as Narun Toya and Mungun Toya will work as coaches of the judo team. The opening ceremony of the 16th Summer Paralympic Games Tokyo 2020 will take place on August 24, 2021 at 7 p.m. Ulaanbaatar time at the National Stadium in Tokyo, Japan. Now let's take a look at the weather forecast of world's major cities. Well, that's all for today and thank you for staying with us. We will see you tomorrow with more news and updates. Have a nice evening, goodbye.